Today we're going to be talking about how to build this custom wire for your DIY solar setup. And not just any wire, I'm talking about the larger wires, you know, your 4 gauge, your 2 gauge, your 2 aught, all of those sort of things. So we're going to be talking about different types of wire, talk about lugs, talk about the other components that you need to do this, all the tools that you're going to need, and specifically two different ways of actually crimping the wire. So first thing up is the wire, but not all wires created the same. For example, this is welding wire. It's very, very flexible because it's got a ton of little teeny strands. Now, compare that to this. And these are both 2 aught wire, so they're both the same gauge wire. But if you look, it's very, very firm. It's very difficult. So it's very difficult to work with, and it's not the best solution for using on a, to use on a solar setup. This stuff is very, very flexible. It's very easy to use. And I would highly recommend you go with a welding wire. So next up is lugs. And you're going to want to make sure you get pure copper, of course. And also, I recommend that you would use these ones that have these little flare on them. They're just easier to put in. We'll get to that in a second when we actually build the wire. Um, and they come in different gauges, of course. You're going to want to match the gauge to your wire. That's pretty straightforward. But in addition to that, you're going to want to match the, the actual stud size. For example, this is 3 8 this is 5 16 So if you're using a 5 16 terminal post, you're going to want to make sure you use this one. Just It'll just give it the tightest, best connection. So that's another thing to remember. So the last thing you're going to need is this heat shrink stuff. And you put this on after you crimp it. And that's just to keep the seal nice and tight. You don't want any air getting in there. You want it to be uh, as tight as it can possibly be. So let's start with how to actually do that. And, and for our purposes here we're going to do it on a two gauge wire but it could be any size wire this is all the same kind of process first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut it so you're going to need a nice pair of scissors or some other way of cutting it i love these they're excellent for cutting wire of course you can't really see that off screen let me see if i can do it up here but it's kind of hard to do it from this angle so you have to cut it to size this size has already been cut um, if you do use a pair of scissors like this, which I love, um, it you know it will dull them. So you know you you either want to sharpen them or get a dedicated pair or something like that. This is actually a pair of scissors I only use for cutting wire, so I don't try to use it for something else. So once you have your wire cut, you're gonna have to strip back some of this insulation. And um, what you can do is you can use a blade, take a blade like this, mark it along, cut it. And I see a ton of people do that, and that's perfectly fine. So there's a better way to do it. Get yourself one of these. They're excellent, and they're easy to use. Your little dial here on the bottom that adjusts the little blade in the middle. I don't have to adjust mine. It's already set for what I need. Then you just push it up with your thumb. You put it on here, and you turn it. I'm actually going to double check, because you want to have a little bit extra. You don't want to have insulation underneath your lug and you don't want to have a bunch of bare wire showing so you just kind of gauge it figure out what you're going to need and then you just put this guy on and once he's in you just turn it heavier wire or the thicker gauge wire you gotta turn more this two gauge stuff you don't have to turn very much you just turn it and you push up and that'll slice it. Now the trick here is you don't want to remove any of these strands. So when you take this wire, the insulation off, you want to make sure that there's no strands come out. You don't want to derate this wire. As you can see, there's no strands in it. That's how you want to do it. So from here, you twist it a little bit. And I'm going to double check. Make sure it fits nicely. So you don't want to, let me untwist it for a second. You don't want this. You, you don't want it like that. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but you, my point is, is you want all of the strands underneath your lug. So I twist it a handful of times to get it nice so it'll fit underneath. Then uh, I'm just gonna dry fit it here just to make sure we're good. And 
See, that should be pretty good. You can see there's a little bit of space between the lug and the insulation, but it's not like that. So you wouldn't want that. And then again, you wouldn't want the lug. You wouldn't want the insulation underneath the lug. So that should be pretty good. So now we're going to talk about two different methods of crimping the lug. So the first way is a very common way. It's a hydraulic crimping tool. Comes in a case. Got this off of Amazon. It's about 50 bucks. This is a 10 ton crimper and it comes with a set of dies. You put use these dies um, depending on your gauge. This one I think does between 12 gauge and 2 aught if I'm not mistaken. Um, I already have the die that I'm going to be using. So we're going to take our lug, put the lug in, make sure it's on. If, it's, if you have it set to off, um, it'll just go forever. So you want to turn it back to on. And what I like to do is put the lug in and then bring it down so it's taut. Then you can see it's pretty good spot there. I'm going to take my wire. Again, making sure that the all the strands go in. And it goes in as best as it can. And then from here, you just apply with the handle until, until it's, um, it's done. All right, so you can see that's kind of a pain in the butt. But you get a decent crimp. I just don't like using these. You can see it kind of separated out. It's very hard to do. I'm kind of winded from pressing on that thing. And um, I just don't like these. All right, let's get rid of this hydraulic crimper tool. Because I have a better way, an easier way, a cheaper way. And that is a hammer crimper. And it's called a hammer crimper because you use a hammer with it. And it's just so much easier, so much cheaper. I just love them. Uh, these are about 20 bucks off of Amazon. Uh, you can't beat it. It's simple. All you gotta do is raise this, put your lug in, and hit it with a hammer. So, again, I got the same lug, or same type of lug. Put it in there. And then here's my wire again. I'm gonna make sure, this is the other end. You can see there's our first one, our horrible one with our hydraulic tool and we're going to take the wire and we're going to slide it in oh, hold on make sure all the wires go in we're going to slide it in and then we're going to get our hammer and we're just going to give a couple of good wax lift it up and there is our crimp. And I've actually cut these open. I have a video on it. And you can see that it, it compresses these just as well as these. And I just, some people love these. I just hate them. I just love my hammer crimper so much better. So the next step, we're going to take some heat wrap. And we're just going to wrap it around there. So on this, you just cut it. Put it on, grab a heat gun, and then you just apply some heat to it. There you go, you've made yourself your own custom wire. And I've made wire up to two gauge. I'm sure you could probably even make it a little bit bigger. If you have small wires, you can just use a hand crimping tool. You know, if you have 10 gauge or, or so, the small stuff, you don't have to worry about doing this project. But if you're doing a bigger gauge wire, this is the simplest way to do it. And you can cut them to any length. And that's it. If you've done this or you have a different method, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your input. As always, like, 
share and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time.